Hey, Alex. You know, I'm real tired today. Long weekend down in Annapolis covering the game, and Temple didn't even come home with the win. Listen, why, 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 why? We got a big weekend coming up. It's homecoming weekend, okay? I know that we're not allowed to tailgate in Lincoln Financial Fields parking lot, but we're getting people in the stands. They're going to be rowdy, so we need you rowdy. You better get pumped up, Brooklyn. You better get pumped up. All right, all right, all right. And while we're here, let's talk about some men's basketball, too. But first, let's take, let's take a time it. out. What's going on? Happy Friday and welcome back to another episode of Temple Timeout. Alongside Alex Call, I'm Brooklyn Vaughn. This season of sports all over the country is giving us an absolute roller coaster. At the start of the semester, we were ready to go this entire season without fans in the stands at Lincoln Financial Field. But this week, state and city restrictions on gatherings were loosened and the link is welcoming both Eagles and Temple fans back to the nest. While the Eagles will have a limited capacity of fans for this Sunday's game against the Ravens, Temple will be taking a phased approach to bringing fans back. For this Saturday's homecoming game against USF, only family members of coaches and players will be offered complimentary tickets. Right, and if all goes well with health and safety, Temple Athletics will offer a prorated three-game season ticket plan for the remaining home games. As of right now, the stadium's occupancy is limited to 7,500 people, including players, team, and stadium personnel. This news is a relief to Temple players, and obviously, who are excited to have their family there to support them this upcoming weekend. So I'm excited to have everyone there, just so for the energy and like the, the atmosphere. My dad called me immediately, so I, I was talking to him, and he said he's going to try to get the game as soon as he could get there, and as soon as they could let him in. So. We'll get back to the homecoming matchup this coming weekend. But first, let's backtrack to the Owls' season opening loss at Navy. Roll the tape, Brooke. Navy takes an early lead in this one. Nelson Smith, 120 yards all night. He led Navy's run game, and that is just one of his two touchdowns this game. Anthony Russo looking more and more like a dual threat quarterback as this one goes on. He carries it in for his first of two rushing touchdowns on the day. And to make it a two point game, Ray Davis finds his way to the end zone. It all comes down to this, a Temple timeout to call the two point conversion to tie it up. Russo to a fully covered Ray Davis and it's knocked down. Bye bye Temple who falls to Navy in this one. Final score, 31-29. You know, on the two-point play, I, I would have liked to have seen him extend it with his feet, but it was such a bad call that, that that's, you know, that's not on him. That's on me. So. so Temple takes their first loss on the road to a triple option team, but now they turn their focus to a more standard college football program in USF. The Bulls come into this one sitting at one and three. Their only win was against the Citadel week one. Their losses come from a ranked opponent in Notre Dame and two American Athletic Conference opponents. Now, Alex, you mentioned that this team is more of a standard college team than Navy, which is true, but there are still some unique aspects of their game plan on both sides of the ball, a well-disguised secondary being one of them. I think last week with Navy, a lot of times what they showed you before the snap is what you were going to get. With South Florida, it's more of, you know, they're going to show you one thing and at the snap of the ball, it's going to be something else. So they're a really high tempo team. Um, I feel like we just will have to match their tempo, you know. I am now joined by Temple Update's sports anchor and reporter Alexis Beckett, who will be headed to the link this weekend to cover the game. Alexis, it's so good to see you. How are you? I'm good. I'm super happy to be here and excited to get to be a part of this game this weekend. All right. So our conversation today, first point, I want to jump right into it. Do you think Temple's offense is going to keep their stride heading into this game against USF? Uh, I absolutely do. Um, they came out better than I expected to begin with. I, I was very impressed with how they came out with that being the first game um, against the Navy. I think that the strength in the quarterback room is going to continue to motivate um, our starting quarterback, Anthony Russo. Uh, Kerry has said, you know, all three quarterbacks that they have 
are talented players and it could be any of them but he did name Anthony as the starter and I think you know Anthony always has that in the back of his mind that you know my spot could be taken let me continue to do what I need to and we have a really strong um, a really strong receiving core that is talented and uh, they've been here for a minute so that, so they know what they need to do and I think they're going to continue to do that. I mean, I agree with you. The weapons that Anthony Russo and the rest of the quarterbacks have to utilize, you know, they showcase a dominant run game too. Ray Davis had a great, great game. Tavon really had a couple carries too. So I agree. But let's go ahead and look at the other side of the ball now. The defense, that was a big head scratcher uh, coming off this loss to Navy. Do you think that they, at this point in the season, can we say that Temple has defensive issues? I think that it's definitely possible that we have defensive issues, but I think right now it's really hard to tell, um, being as though we didn't really get to see all of Temple's defense against Navy. It, it was hard for them to um, even slightly adjust to that triple option that Navy was running. So, you know, our passing defense, we re really didn't get to see that. So I think this game, after this game, we'll be able to make more of a decision. Yeah, and I'm going off of what you just said, you know, the only place where I really see concern is kind of in that secondary and then the linebackers, but a lot of that has to be attributed to those key departures to the NFL. So big shoes to fill, but I'm not going to rule it out yet for the Owls. I think that they do need to redeem themselves, though, for sure this week against USF. Um, and then speaking of individual players, I want to know who on the Owls is going to have a big game. Who are your players to watch this week? Um, I'm going to go with Brandon Mack, the receiver. I think he's an extremely talented player. And I think, you know, his, his senior campaign, I think he's going to continue to, you know, continue to break those records that Temple has. It seems almost as if he's doing it every game. He's, he's coming up in the rankings. Um, I also think David Martin Robinson, the tight end, is going to have a big game. You know, with the loss of Kenny Boa last year, I think that he's doing a great job at filling those shoes. Uh, Temple likes to utilize their tight ends a lot. So I think he's going to have another big game yeah so I'm gonna go same thing with the offense I'm gonna say our running backs Ray Davis and Tavon really keep an eye out for them especially because USF you know their defense isn't the strongest but if anything they are a little bit more uh, efficient on the pass defensive side so um, I'm gonna say that with pass coverage being accounted for that maybe Temple will rely a little bit more on those guys Ray Davis and Tavon really but in general Let's ask, what are your game predictions? I am going to take Temple this game. They're back in the link, and it was just announced that they can have their family there. And I think, you know, historically, Temple always plays better at the link. They love being home. You know, Anthony Russo in that last media availability talked about how much of a difference that makes, you know, in the way that they play. So uh, I'm going to take them. And I don't think, you know, uh, USF's, offense is they're ranked last in the AAC right now so I think that's also going to be um, an issue for them so I'm going Temple. Well you took the words right out of my mouth I see a dub for Temple this weekend as well hopefully they can pick up their first home game coming off that tough loss to Navy but Alexis it was great having you thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you so much for having me. Here we go. The Owls return to the nest at Lincoln Financial Field to host the Bulls. Kickoff is at noon on Saturday. You can catch the game on ESPN+. Plus, and of course, we'll have our full coverage of the game with Alexis Beckett on our web and social media platforms. Now moving over to the court. The men's basketball team lost a lot of key senior players to graduation and the NBA draft, including Quentin Rose and Nate Pierre-Louis. With plenty of new recruits, the Owls are ready to establish new player leadership. Sports desk reporter Donald McHugel has more. Even after experiencing a total roster overhaul in the months following the 2019-2020 season, Temple men's basketball isn't concerned with finding a clear-cut leader. Coach Aaron McKee will rely on veterans like J.P. Mormon and Devondre Perry to help lead the way, but he's more concerned with everyone having a voice on the team. But we need everybody to lead. You know, when we break it up and we go guards and bigs, we're going to need Jake to be a leader down there with those big guys and Arashma to be a leader down there with those big guys and on the guard side, JP and Dre. So Mormon went so far as to compare this year's Temple roster to the recent NBA Finals runner-ups Miami Heat, who were praised for their selfless style of play, which opened up space for every player on their roster, regardless of experience. You know, we don't care who gets the, gets the shot, who gets the credit. We're all, we all have a clean slate and we all are just trying to find our niche and find our uh, role within this team. 
For this Temple Squad, leadership isn't a scoring contest and definitely not a popularity one. Leaders are the guys that's respected, not the guys that everybody like. Those are the guys that's respected, that do all the heavy lifting behind the closed doors. Reporting for Temple Update, I'm Donovan Hubel. That'll do it for this edition of Temple Timeout. Be sure to follow us at TU underscore Sports Desk to stay up to date on all things Temple Athletics. For Brooklyn Bone and the entire Temple Timeout crew, I'm Alex Cow. See you guys next time.